Welcome back everyone. For today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the rematch, which was a game played between Fabiano Caruana and myself in the early title Tuesday yesterday morning. Now, for everybody who watched a video of the recap of Norwich Chess, the final round a couple days ago, you're probably wondering like, wait a second, it's only a few days later. How on earth did you guys play? Was there another term that we missed, et cetera, et cetera. Now, as most people know, one of my favorite tournaments during the week is this classic event called Title Tuesday. There's one held in the morning and there is one held in the evening. Now, of course, all the players who finished Norwich has a couple days ago, they packed their bags, they travel, a little bit of a party. I will add for all of you YouTubers out there, there's probably some videos of me playing against Gukesh that we'll be releasing in the near future from the after party. But nonetheless, let's focus on the topic at hand. So everyone packs up, everyone travels home. Two days later, we have not had enough chess. Everybody needs more. So as such, Fabiana and I are both playing in the Title Tuesday event, and let's jump right into the action. So here we go. Fabiano playing with the white pieces, and I'm playing with the black pieces. Now to set the stage, this is Title Tuesday. It's an 11-round event. Going into this game, Fabiano was on a torrid pace. He had seven and a half points out of eight games. He, in fact, won his first seven games, was on seven out of seven before he drew against the former world chess champion, Magnus Carlsen, round number eight, and round number nine, he was playing against me. Now, I, on the other hand, had drawn two games, so I was on seven points out of eight, half point behind. So Fabiano opens with e4, and here I decide to play c5, and I essay the classic Sicilian defense. Now, I did consider playing e5, but there were basically two reasons that I chose not to play e5. First and foremost is that Fabiano, if he wanted to, he could force a draw in the Berlin defense with this line with castles. Knight takes e4, d4, knight d6, d takes e5, knight takes b5, a4, knight d4, takes, 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 d5, takes, takes, and then queen e4, queen e6, queen d4, queen d6 queen four queen six and you get a repetition now with Fabiano leading by half a point I don't really want to make a draw here that's the first thing secondarily in one of the in one of the late games in Norway chess Fabiano actually had this Berlin defense where he was playing with the white piece in the Armageddon game against D Gukesh from India now in that game Fabiano got an overwhelming position in fact he should have won the Armageddon game Gukesh was able to complicate it just enough and Fabiano actually ended up flagging now, it was a very pivotal result in Norway chess, as it turns out, because when Fabiano lost that Armageddon game, that cost him a very critical half point. And when Fabiano and I played in the final round of Norway chess and I won the game and I got three classical points, I beat Fabiano by half a point in the final standings. Whereas Fabiano had won the Armageddon game against Gukesh, he would have had an extra half point and it would have only been a tie. So very, very critical game. Nonetheless, because of these two, two reasons, I simply felt that e5 is not the right choice, and so I decided to play the Sicilian. Fabiano plays knight to f3, and now I play knight to c6. Additionally, by playing the Sicilian, what I also do when I'm playing a game with the black pieces here is I make Fabiano have to potentially show some of his preparation. And in an online blitz game with very little on the line, other than bragging rights and $1,000, you don't really want to show that. You'd much rather show that in, a, in an event like Norway chess or something of that nature. Nonetheless, the show goes on. So we get knight to f3, knight c6. Fabiano plays bishop b5, which of course is a classic Rosa Limo variation in the Sicilian. Now, many people these days avoid playing the open Sicilian for a couple of reasons. First of all, there's the Klashnikov, which I played in the American Cup with some great success against Lenier Dominguez in our classical game, which I won. There's also the Sheveshnikov, which is rock solid. None other than the former world champion Magnus Carlsen has played it, most specifically in his 2018 World Championship match against none other than Fabiano Caruana. So for this reason, many people these days try to dodge going into the open because there's so many variations where black is doing well. So we got bishop b5, I play g6, Fabiano castles, bishop g7, and now we get rook to e1. Now in the two games which I had in Norway chess with this position, both Anish Giri and Ali Reza Ferugia both traded the bishop for the knight on c6 and then played this move rook to e1. After queen to c7, Anish chose to play the move d3. And after e5, c3, knight to f6, d4, takes, 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 castles, knight c3, and queen b6. I would go on to draw quite comfortably against Anish. Of course, there's a recap video from that game, so you can watch my analysis of that game if you're very interested in it. Additionally, in my game against Ali Reza Ferugia, after takes, takes, rookie one, queen c7, Ali Reza chose to play this move knight to a3, and I responded in kind by putting my knight on the rim as well with knight to h6. Now, this game was a far more tense. Game would end in draw, but it was very, very critical. And I think in the future, you actually will see more games with this knight a3, knight h6 being played. But nonetheless, in this game, Fabiano chooses to be a little bit more classical, and he plays this move rook to e1 instead, avoiding trading the bishop for the knight on c6. Here I play knight to f6, Fabiano goes e5, and now I play knight to d5. 
now initially you might think well why are you why are you playing knight to f6 allowing white to gain space with e5 the reason is actually quite simple now the pawn on e5 potentially can become a little bit weaker additionally if white plays a move like d3 castles and let's just say knight bd2 I can always play d6 here which creates this chain of three pawns and if white trades now I have the chain of two but additionally both of these bishops have great scope they can develop they can be developed very very easily so Fabiano here plays knight c3 and now I go knight c7 now the reason I don't trade the knights on c3 is because if I trade the knights on c3 after d takes c3 even though white gets the double pawns on c2 and c3 white can develop this bishop to either f4 or g5 so first of all I can't go d6 here because after pawn takes pawn there's a little bit of a pin here and I'm simply losing material and if I castle here now white can play bishop to f4 d6 is no longer an idea because again I simply lose a pawn and if I play a move like b6 for example white can go queen to d2 rook a to d1 and I'm really struggling to develop if I go bishop b7 rook d1 I have this big problem with the weakness of the pawn here on d7 I can't push it to d6 what exactly am I doing and if I play just a random move like let's just say a5 after rook a d1 queen to e8 and a move like bishop c4 followed by bishop uh not bishop b7 let's just say rook to b8 and bishop h6 here white has an overwhelming advantage here the pawn of d7 is a big weakness both of these white bishops are perfectly placed where I can even go knight g5 at some point and it's an epic epic disaster for me so I play knight to c7 trying to trade the knight for the bishop and Fabiano finally decides to trade the bishop for the knight on c6 but after d takes c6 now I have the double pawns on c5 and c6 but I can develop my bishop very quickly and I can also reroute my knight to d4 so Fabiano here plays d3 and after a short think I choose to play this move bishop g4 now there are two options here for black first one is bishop g4 and the point is that you want to trade the bishop for the knight here and now play against the pawn and then put the knight on d4 the other option which black has and an op and something which I played many many years ago in a game against Daniel Stelwagen from the Netherlands is you can castle and let's just say white goes h3 here to stop bishop g4 after knight to e6 knight to e4 you can go b6 let's just say bishop to uh, e3 and now you can play knight to d4 and here after knight takes d4 cd4 bishop f4 you can go c5 create the connect four and down the road bishop to b7 and now you have scope for both the bishops the one problem with this position however is that bishop on g7 is still very very passive here and after white plays a move like knight to d2 and knight to f3 you don't really know how to activate this bishop if you play f6 you create a weakness on the e e7 square or on the e file as a whole and if you play a move like queen d5 knight f3 without f6 the bishop on g7 is still extremely passive so those are the two options that you have here now again in a blitz game you don't want to spend too much time thinking I simply felt that if I played for this 96 94 line um that, that Fabiano would get too many easy moves white goes 94 white white definitely wants to trade black has this idea of b6 c5 but white's ideas I felt like were too easy to play and Fabiano would not have to think as such I played Bishop g4 we get h3 takes takes and now I go Knight to e6 and the idea is quite simple I want to go Knight to d4 forking the Queen at the pawn at the same time and also the Knight on d4 is very very optimally placed with the pawn supporting it so Fabiano plays Bishop to f4 and I castle here I do not trade the Knight for the Bishop because if we trade and I castle here after a move like Queen to e3 or even a move like Queen to g3 white is simply better because the Bishop is very passive you don't have the scope and playing f6 will always create weaknesses either the open e file for white to create the legendary triple stack or if you take with the Bishop you always have this permanent weak pawn on e7 so here I decide to castle Fabiano plays Bishop to h2 in this position and now I choose to play knight d4 forking the queen and the pawn Fabiano responds with queen to d1 simply guarding the pawn on c2 and now I do play this move f6 here now the reason that I play f6 is I'm sort of lacking in play what do I do if I try to expand on the queen side with b5 all I'm doing here potentially is creating a weakness with this pawn on c5 so I don't really want to play b5 normally I want to play b6 here and just consolidate the chain so I can't play b5 to be active now it's funny because the computer says just go 96 and you're completely fine but for us humans just retreating without a clear-cut plan is not how we play chess additionally if I if, if I don't play b5 what other ideas do I have and the only other idea that makes any sense is to play f6 here trying to open up this diagonal for the bishop on g7 here Fabiano trades and now he goes knight to e4 trying to attack the pawn on c5 I play b6 
And now I create the chain of three. Fabiano goes C3, and now I play knight to F5. And here, Fabiano makes a very committal decision when he plays this move G4. Now, apparently, the computer thinks that after white goes A4 here, white's a little bit better, because if I play A5, now after queen to B3 and king to H8 and queen to E6, white is trying to infiltrate with knight D6 or bishop D6. The pawn on C6 is very weak, and if I play a move like queen E8 after takes, takes, and bishop C7, suddenly all the pawns are going to collapse on the queen side. And for this reason, if I can't play a5, then down the road, white's going to play a5, maybe try to play on the a file, maybe queen b3 is an idea as well. And white is simply a little bit better here. Nonetheless, this is a blitz game. You don't have all day to think and figure out what the most, most, uh, the, the most concrete ideas are. So here, Fabiano plays g4. I go knight to h6, and now Fabiano checks. What Fabiano was thinking when he played g4 here is that he'd love to put this pony on d6 or a bishop on d6, but he can't do it because the knight on f5 covers the square. So when Fabiano goes g4, knight h6, and queen b3 here, I play queen d5, and now he trades the queens. Now, it's worth noting, of course, at this point, if Fabiano were to play his move knight to d6, which looks kind of scary on first glance, I can actually play f5 here because white can't go g5 due to the queen capture. And if white plays a move like, I don't know, king g2, for example, suddenly I have moves like queen to h4, queen to g5, maybe even takes, takes, and queen h4 as well. And suddenly there's a lot of pressure from out of thin air. So Fabiano realized that, and he checks. I play queen d5, we trade the queens, and now Fabiano plays knight to d6. What Fabiano is hoping here when he goes knight to d6 is that, that he can create the classic kebab with rook to e7 on the seventh rank. However, I am just in time here with this move rook f d8, because now if white goes rook to e7, I have bishop to f8, attacking the rook and the knight, and after rook e6 and knight to f7, offering the trade of the knights, I simply am covering the only entry square on the seventh rank, and black should be completely fine here. So we get rook to e6. I go knight to f7. And now Fabiano plays this very interesting move, rook a e1. At this point during the game, I had already resigned myself to the fact that the game was going to be a draw. I thought Fabiano was going to trade, play something like rook to e1. And after rook to e8, swap, 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 swap. Game should end in a draw here. It's worth noting, of course, people are probably wondering, well, wait, can't white go bishop b8, a6, and bishop a7, and win either the pawn on c5? or win the pawn on b6. Now, bishop b8 is a move, but after king to d7 here, you do not want to be a Bobby Fisher here and play bishop takes pawn, because after king c7, let's just say a4, and king to b7, you simply are going to lose your bishop on a7. As such, if you can't take the pawn, you have to play king g2, and now after a6, king f3, let's just say b5 here, the game should end in a draw with the same number of pawns on the board. We both have bishops and not a whole lot of hope for either side. But... Fabiano plays rook a e1, and now during the game, I actually started thinking for a little bit because I realized that this gives me an extra option here. Initially, I was just going to play bishop f8, trade, and draw the game once again because there's no infiltration on the seventh rank. However, as I realized, I actually have this move knight to g5 here, which is very tricky because I forked the rook in the pawn, but I also threatened to fork the king and the rook with knight to f3 as well. And if white plays this move rook to e3 here, I can now go bishop to f8, knight b5, and suddenly after d4, take stakes. Very hard to stop this knight f3 threat. Your rook's under attack, rook guards the pawn. And after rook g3 and a6, knight is to go to the rim. And after bishop d6, it's uh-oh spaghetti time. Your rook on g3 is stuck. If you go to g2, you got forked. If you don't go to g2 and you play king g2, well, I just take play rook e8. And I'm going to argue that in this position, my rooks control both of the open files. And I should simply win the game here. So Fabiano plays rook e8. We trade the rooks instead, and now I play this move knight to f3. Now, I used a lot of time before playing knight g5 specifically because I couldn't come up with an idea against this rook swap on e8. But then as I realized right before I played knight g5, when I go knight to f3 check, I'm attacking the king and the bishop at the same time. White would love to go king f1 and bring his king towards the center, but here this simply hangs the bishop on h2. And when, if white goes king g2, I have knight to e1 forking the king of the pawn here, and now black is doing really, really well. So... Fabiano goes king to h1 in this position, and now I play knight to e1. Fabiano plays bishop b8, trying to win the pawns on a7, b6, and c5. I decide to play this move a5 here, and the reasoning behind this is that when white goes bishop to a7, we take on d3, he takes on b6, but now I can go a4 and try to use this a pawn and push it down the board and get a queen down the road. Additionally, both the pawns on f2 and b2 are still hanging, so there's still some good chances to win the game. Fabiano, however, shows really, really good technique. He plays knight to c7, attacking the pawn on d5. And here I play the move knight takes f2, king g2, drop the knight back, Fabiano takes, and now I go king to f7. 
now computer thinks that c4 is maybe a little bit better but c4 is also an extremely committal move because after bishop to d4 white gets the classic wooden shield here great bishop in the center of the board and when i go king f7 and white plays king to f3 knight takes b2 and let's just say a move like h4 for example it's very hard to do anything here because the pawns in c4 and a4 are extremely weak if i go knight to d3 white can go knight b6 forking the pawns in a4 and c4 and then i have to go back to b2 and i can't really move my bishop here because if i if i try to move my bishop then i simply hang the pawn on f6 and i can't i can't move the bishop can't really move the knight if i go a3 white can maybe go bishop c5 to try and win the pawn in a3 even and it's just not a whole lot so for that reason I decided to play king f7 we get b3 here by Fabiano now the pawn on b2 is no longer hanging and I also no longer have c4 now this is where I make a very committal decision to play a3 I go all in trying to win the game now the reason I did this is because I figured with Fabiano on seven and a half out of eight I'm on seven out of eight I cannot rely on Fabiano to lose a game later on in the event as such it's better to take your chance here and try to win the game and, and if it doesn't work it doesn't work but I also didn't think it could possibly be losing either so I thought no real risk if I play a3 I can try to maybe win if Fabiano gets low on time and blunders and that's that so I play a3 Fabiano goes knight to e3 another excellent move here I play f5 here trying to open up the scope for the bishop now if I were to play knight to c1 which is completely fine after bishop c5 knight takes a2 takes takes again we have even material here both sides have three pawns on the board and it should be a draw as such I didn't do that so I go f5 Fabiano takes I take on c3 there's a trade knight c2 and now I go bishop to b2 which is the whole point of sacking the f pawn because now the bishop on b2 anchors the pawn on a3 and I still can hope for some knight c1 knight a2 swindle if possible Fabiano goes king to f3 I go king f5 and now Fabiano shows shows again perfect technique by playing king to e3 here I was hoping that at this point maybe I maybe Fabiano would play something like bishop to a7 and maybe I could maybe I could even get the king over and then go for some knight c1 and there there's some swindle possibilities but Fabiano is having none of it here and he plays king to e3 undermining the knight on d3 now I'd love to go knight to c1 here but after bishop takes c5 knight takes a2 bishop takes a3 suddenly white has two pawns and black has one pawn and if anybody can win it's going to be white as such I play this move knight to b4 here we trade Fabiano goes bishop c5 now Fabiano could have tried to play king to d3 for example but it's very tricky because after king to g5 now you have to calculate what's going on in this end game after king c5 and bishop c3 now white can play bishop to a5 king h4 and take but again you never know what exactly is going on here in the end game and with limited time on the clock you don't want to have to end up in some calculation of a pawn race now white is still a little bit better here in this resulting queen upon end game but due to the fact that we end up with with white being up a pawn but the pawn being on the edge of the board this should be a very simple draw because I can always bring my king back towards the center the main reason being just to illustrate the point is that let's just say we get a position like this I can always trade the Queens as long as my king can get to the corner because it's an edge pawn so even if white can get the opposition here it doesn't matter because the pawn is on the edge of the board as such this would still be a draw so Fabiano instead plays bishop c5 bishop c3 and now he plays bishop e7 which effectively is offering a draw again the whole line with king d3 and king c4 still does king c4 still does exist as, as always but Fabiano didn't want to calculate this with limited time and he makes a pragmatic decision to play bishop to e7 and after king to e6 bishop g5 king d5 king d3 bishop to e5 we end up drawing the game here we, we we both just keep our bishop my bishop guarding the pawn and Fabiano's bishop attacking the pawn and there's nothing either side can do here and the game ends in a very peaceful draw so what does that mean that means that Fabiano and I, and I draw this game now I did just realize by the way for everyone who's watching the video you probably realize that I don't I don't make edits to the um I don't make edits to my videos as I'm doing them but I did just realize that the uh the clock is cut off so I, I I did just actually realize that and I do apologize for that you guys so there I'll make I'll make a very brief uh edit on the fly as we're going through the game um but at any rate the game ends in a draw so this means that Fabiano moves to a score of eight points out of nine and I move to a score or moves to a score of, of eight points out of nine and I move to a score of six and a half points out of nine that being said of course there were still two more rounds to go now I would proceed actually I said the score is wrong seven and a half out of eight so Fabiano was on eight out of nine and I was on seven and a half out of nine Fabiano would continue to play quite well he would actually draw another game and finish on a score of nine or no he would finish on a score of nine points out of 11 as would I but the surprising winner was none other than the famous freaking legend God Kamsky, 
who had actually come from out of nowhere to score nine and a half points out of 11. He would win his last few rounds and win what I believe is his first ever title Tuesday. So a big congrats to Goddard for winning the title Tuesday. For those of you who have watched this video, I hope you enjoyed the, the rematch or the revenge match, whatever you want to call it, between Fabiano, Fabiano and myself. I'm sure we'll play again very, very soon. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this recap. Once again, make sure to hit that subscribe button below. I cannot express my thanks enough to all the 2 million plus of you guys who have subscribed to my, my channel. And once again, I hope you're excited to see the great quality back in our recaps and all our videos for YouTube since I'm no longer in Norway. See you guys soon. Have a good one. Bye.